Okay, three, two, one. Oh, dude. How's it going guys? My name is Savarish and this thing that looks like a broken transformer behind me, that is my 2015 McLaren P1. And we have done a lot of work on this, but we're not done, not by a long shot. For nearly a decade since its release, the McLaren P1 had been my ultimate money no object dream car. But there was no way I could afford one because prices for used examples started at $2 million. So when I found a flooded one for a fraction of the price, I took out a second mortgage to buy it and got to work. And what I discovered was that there was no part of the car left untouched by the flood. Now what that means is that everything on this car has to come off to get cleaned and or rebuilt. That includes the engine and transmission and also that body because we do have some carbon fiber damage on the bottom of the tub. Now usually McLaren would say this is a complete write off. They would probably say that about the flood, but it, it doesn't matter. If there is carbon fiber damage, McLaren will not touch it. But I have a person who will. Now, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? You guys <laughs> should know him from the McLaren 675 rebuild. This is Joey, and uh, Joey is the frame doctor. He does frames on bicycles and uh, boats and lots of things that are made of this material, carbon fiber. So, uh, Joey, what do you think of my, uh, my yellow submarine here? Well, I gotta be honest with you. I don't think it's as bad as a 675. Okay. It's just bigger. It's a little Marianas Trench we got there. It was perched on what seemed like a toilet, and then uh, <laughs> it was just dragged. Um, and Jack says it was, a, it was a toilet. It wasn't a toilet. It just kind of looked like one. <laughs> okay. That's it. Doesn't I'm gonna. That's that's a hill I'm gonna die on. We have uh, degunkified uh, the inside of the carbon tub because Joey was here a little while ago and right. we we saw some water, didn't we? We did. Oh, I'm gonna get water all in my arm. That's okay. Oh, oh, that's that's a good smell. So gross. That's a good smell. Oh, <laughs> oh, it keeps going down my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that went right in my mouth. How much water could it be, honestly? Not you know? that much. It's not. It can't be that much. It can't be that much. It's still going for that. It can't be that much. Oh, <laughs> that is not that much. Look at that. It's already empty. It's our it's fine. It's fine, guys. It's fine. It's oh. That's good. That's actually Look at this. Well we know one thing. It's twin streams. It'll hold water. Alright, let's see if this other side has it. I don't think so. Alright, because can't pop. <laughs> I don't think so. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that one smells. They both smell. Oh! oh. Awesome. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Isn't that Look awesome? at that. Oh, there's like a film on it. Yeah, we should. Uh, it's like a jellyfish. We should, all, we should all go take a shower. Not together, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was really crazy. <laughs> the water was everywhere. So we're sure it's dry back here because there were there's bulkheads everywhere. So it's kind of. Uh, so the answer to that is no. I'm not, I have no idea if it's dry. Really sure. Uh, so you can. I guess you know, we'll find out. You could drill some holes and you could figure <laughs> it out. So what's the process for repairing this? Because uh, if it was up to McLaren, they'd be like, no, we can't right. do this. I mean, the way this is built, it's kind of like an egg crate. Okay. Where um, the structure inside makes everything so stiff. Uh, and Jack and I were looking at this side uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. and it's incredible how flat it is. Yeah. Um, really, really flat. This is not flat anymore. Okay. So it's got kind of a kick in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a section here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come out past where it's bad, probably, you know, three, four inches on each side. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's some core, there's some closed cell foam. Um, that sandwich here, it's really thin, and I think it's only like eighth inch core. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're gonna try to do is step it. Um, we're gonna step this off so that we get rid of all the core, and then we have all good carbon, so that we can see an outline of good carbon 
um, with the bag. Carbon fiber, in essence, is a uh, you know carbon fiber strands, which are these guys, and then you have a resin on top, and that's uh, you know both of those things together give it its strength. Right, and this this uh, McLaren RTMs, they're resin transfer molding. Ooh. So what they do is they mold the carbon without resin, Ooh. and then they put it in the main mold, mm -hmm. close it all up and then they inject it under incredible amount of pressure. Okay, I'll leave you to that. We'll come back later cool. when, when this is uh, cut out and then hopefully you're not also underwater. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. What's going on here, Joey? Well, so again, we had damage that went all the way down through there. Um, so what we've done, as you can see, it's got a, it's a closed cell foam. So it's carbon, foam, carbon. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out to me, this is the actual inside of the car is right there. That's the- Yeah, that's the floor. That's the floor of the seat. So not a whole lot here, um, but you can see it has separated. Mm -hmm. um, Usually that's supposed to be like glued down yeah, and cinched Yeah, that should be down. all glued down. Well, actually, you come down here, mm -hmm. that's all nice and tight. Okay. Every, everything's tight here. Um, but the foam was damaged, so we had to get rid of that. So what we'll do is we'll straighten it out a little bit. Um, like I said before, the bottom of this car is unbelievably flat. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Um, and now what we have to do is bring the rest of it. To the same place so anyway um we're gonna get ourselves some of this foam and we're gonna make up a panel we'll straighten some of this out so it's so it's an even number all the way through here mm -hmm. we're gonna make a piece at the shop and then i'm gonna bring it down here and i'm gonna fit it and then we're gonna make a big glue joint here and a glue joint there pretty messed up mm -hmm. and then you can see all the layers of carbon yeah like all the strands go this way and that, that way, way and that, that way. way exactly Making it really strong, cause look, this is, I mean, it's not even. Yeah, it's super thin. That's the only thing that's on the floor. Thin. We're gonna clean this all up, take a little more out of it here and there. Um, and then get this suit off. <laughs> it's, get, it's getting a little itchy. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys can tell by now, but I am obsessed with the safety and integrity of the cars I build because they need to meet or exceed the specifications of the original manufacturer. But just in case something does happen and someone unfortunately gets hurt, I'm glad that today's sponsor, Morgan & Morgan, makes it super easy to submit an injury claim right from your phone. With over 800 attorneys operating in 49 states, consulting with the legal team has never been easier. You can start a claim with the largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan, in just eight clicks by clicking the link in the video description or go to www.forthepeople 
people.com or just by dialing pound law. That's pound five, two, nine. So we're switching gears a little bit because I have my friend Matt from E3 Customs. If you guys don't know Matt, you definitely should because his shop, E3 Customs, has done the interior in my McLaren, the Murcielago, mm -hmm. uh, the Supra, the Supra that went to SEMA, and then every other really cool car that you've seen on social media, he's probably had a hand in. They do the most amazing interior work, like all custom stuff, they do OEM replacement, they do everything. And I'm not gonna let him talk, I'm just gonna say good <laughs> things about him. Um, Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we have the dashboard out here, and I wanted Matt to take this back home with him and see what he can do. But he's not gonna take the whole dashboard out because this is carbon fiber and there's not really much to do. I was hoping that he could take maybe the steering wheel and like some padding here. But what do you think of my uh, P1 project? It's a little salty. It's a little salty, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This needs to all come apart. Yeah. And I'm gonna replace everything back here. I mean, everything short of the, the actual vents, but all the uh, wiring, this and the uh, airbags. The, yeah. the airbags, absolutely. Oh, do, you, yeah. do you think the airbags should be fine after yeah, they, being dunked in water? Should be. <laughs> that, is, that is not, <laughs> that, no, the airbags are bad. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so we're gonna replace all that. I'm even gonna replace the steering column uh, because the steering column, surprise, surprise, is exactly the same as in any other McLaren. So uh, all this stuff is going bye-bye and uh, we're getting new stuff. But um, this this guy though, Oh yeah. so these are these are seats that you're quite familiar with. Yeah, they're basically the same thing as the 675. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same, uh, except these ones smell way worse. Yeah. Well, that that other, the 675 had some issues too. It was yeah. also a little waterlogged to oh, say the least. Yeah, but not like this. Not, not like this. It's no. not, it didn't have sand in it, but it yeah. was in snow and then it melted and that shrunk that, and all that good yes, stuff. Yes, that is true. Um, so I don't know what we're gonna do with these in terms of like what design and theme we're going for, but it's gonna be something that no one's ever seen before. I actually like the color that we have in the 675. I love that color. Yeah. That, uh, that, uh, I know you do. <laughs> Bentley English tan? Yeah, was that Bentley it? English tan. Yeah. Uh, tans, browns, mm -hmm. uh, something along that lines with the colors that you're thinking for the car. Yeah. Um, really, other than that, there's not a whole lot besides grays and whites mm -hmm. uh, and black, but we don't want to do that. That's too boring. Even with cool stitching, it's just it doesn't belong in this car. It needs something better. Yeah. Um, and the reason why this car needs something better is because I have some very big plans for it. And I might as well get to them right now. So it should come as no surprise to you that this car will be modified. Now, a lot of you have been telling me just keep it stock, but I think that if we're gonna build it, we need to build it better. So I've come up with some goals for this project. And let's start with the horsepower. So as you may know, the P1 is a very, very fast car and it has a lot of horsepower. The stock horsepower is 903. And that is good, but it's not good enough. So we're gonna go from 903 to between 1200 and 1400 horsepower. Now this has never been done before because as you can imagine, people don't really modify $2 million cars. So we are pioneering the way for P1 modification here. Now the reason why we need 1200 to 1400 horsepower is because of this next bit, top speed. I was always a fan of the McLaren F1. That was my money no object dream car since I was a kid. But since those cars are $20 million plus, I don't think I can ever be in the situation to afford one. And I know that the P1 was supposed to be a spiritual successor to the F1. I wanna make it a true spiritual successor, and that means it has to be the fastest McLaren in the world. Right now, the McLaren Speedtail holds that record at 250 miles an hour. Nobody actually knows how fast the top speed of that car is, but let's just say it's 250. We have to go 250 plus. And realistically, if we do this right, if we have a 9,000 RPM rev limit, this can go 260, maybe 265, maybe more than that, because we're gonna be the first people to do this. We have to take off the speed limiter in the car, which is currently at 217 miles an hour, and modify it so it doesn't freak out, and hopefully not 
put rods through the bottom of the engine. I have never driven a P1 before, but I've heard from people that there are certain things that could make the driving experience better. And number one is shifting speed on the transmission is not exactly the best stock because it uses the same sort of software as you get on the 12C and the 650S. And that is generally kind of slow. But if you use the software from my car, the 675LT or the 720S or 765, they improve those shift times even though the transmission is exactly the same. We're also gonna do something about the suspension. So the suspension is very bespoke in this car and it's all hydraulic, meaning that if you up the hydraulic pressure, you change the feel of the car. But another major thing that I wanna tackle on this project are the looks. Although the P1 looks very, very good, that's Frank Stephenson design, I think that we can improve on it just a little bit by making a bespoke carbon body. That That's gonna be hard. That's that's That one's gonna be a little bit difficult. But in addition to the bespoke carbon body, uh, I'm gonna have a bespoke interior because, I mean, honestly, I wanna have a nice interior in this car. I think that all the P1 interiors are just kind of boring. So we're gonna spice that up just a little bit. We're gonna make it the hypercar, the luxury hypercar that's always meant to be. Now, when it comes to theming, all this together will make a pretty formidable package. And I have a name for it, and I think it's very fitting for this car. And it's gonna be called the P1 Evo. Let's get to work. This is now a lot lighter, and if we just do this, now it's a lot cleaner. One of the things that we have to take care of is this guy right here, but I think McLaren made it super, super difficult to get this off. I think this is just glued on here. So we might have to do this when it's already on the car. All right, cool. On to the next thing. So welcome everyone to my very, very dirty engine. This is the 3.8 liter V8 twin turbo from a McLaren P1. It was underwater and it has a hybrid drive assembly and a transmission and a ton of hoses and a ton of wires. And we need to remove all of them because this engine is getting rebuilt. It's getting upgraded, but not only that, we're upgrading the turbos. And then we have to see what everything back here is like because I don't know if this is watertight, probably not. And uh, we're gonna take off the E-motor, the electric motor that sits on the side of the engine. And I've never done this before, so this is gonna be a big time lapse. Two steps forward, one step back. In here, we have the cylinder head, and in here, we have some cylinder head damage. That right there, that is eaten away. So this cylinder head is gonna need to be welded up and maybe even ground down and uh, modified. You can see right here, there's another uh, instance of, yeah, this is just really, really bad. But it doesn't get any better because this turbo 
that used to be a little bit free now is completely rusted solid. Like I can't, I can't move this at all with my finger, but we might have a solution for this. Now I'm not just gonna clean it up and put it back on the car. We're gonna rebuild this. We're gonna make this even better, but I have a solution that I've been willing to try and it's over here. Hey guys, what's hey, up? What's up? Hi. Will that fit in this thing? Yeah, well, we're going to see. So I'm going to take this turbo and we're going to walk it all the way over here. And it is uh, it is heavy. So I'm going to put it... it oh, it just it. took a dump in there. Oh, what is that? That's nasty. Oh, it just... That is a... It's a piece of poop. That's incorrect. Yeah. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is an ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, the way it works is you turn it on and it uh, uses water and... I don't know how it works. So we fill this with distilled water and cleaning solution. And in theory, this should be a lot cleaner. Let's do it. Oh, look at that. Like, right away. Look at that. So this also has a heater. You can see it's already getting cloudy. You can smell it. Mm-hmm. It's releasing a lot of the, uh, oh boy. That's doing a real good job. So all that stuck on dirt and kicked on mess. It's just agitating the water really, really quickly. That's cool. See the ripples in the water? It's almost like a film on top. So 30 minutes later and let's take a look. Ooh, that's actually not bad. Oh, wow. That's not bad at all. Uh, does it spin? No. No? Not yet. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if we turn it around. You know what we need to do? We need to remove this uh, this log manifold. And uh, in order to do that, we gotta cut these off. That way we can stuff this turbo and the other turbo in there and uh, see if they spin. Um, I'm just doing this out of morbid curiosity to see if we can fix a turbo by just cleaning it. But uh, I, I feel like we can. Welcome back to Cooking with Tavarish. This is, doesn't, doesn't smell good. It smells really bad. Uh, these are the turbos and Boy, are they looking, honestly, they're looking pretty good. Looks, uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, not new by any stretch of the imagination, but if you can tell, this guy spins. So this spins very, very freely. Uh, the other one, not so much. So, uh, the other guy, that, that is, uh, well, he's had, he's had a rough go of it. And, uh, this one is completely seized. So uh, it's looking a lot better. And this, all I have to do now is dry them off. And then we are gonna send them out and maybe take a trip out to the actual company that makes these. This is uh, made by a company in the Netherlands. And they reached out to me and they told me that they would be able to custom make a set of turbochargers for me. Now I know this car seems like it's, you know, the latest and greatest, but the car is 10 years old. So new turbo technology has come out and I really want to put that in this. So these turbochargers will no longer make the amount of power that they did on the stock car. We're looking for way more power. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, I need to take the transmission and hybrid drive assembly from that engine and see what that's about. So here's our predicament. Uh, that right there is the e-motor, and then uh, that's transmission, that's the engine. The e-motor is stuck in between the engine and uh, what seems to be the water pump down here. So uh, we don't know what to do. We don't have a factory service manual for this car, and we certainly don't want to break anything. Uh, so we're just taking away all the bolts and moving things around 
And right now we have one bolt that is stuck behind the water pump, behind a bracket that we can't get to. And it doesn't seem like that's the right way to do it. Uh, but also taking the transmission off is a no-go because we won't be able to uh, take off all the bolts. There are some bolts hidden behind the uh, e-motor here. So I don't know what we're going to do. We're just going to have to, we're going to have to wing it. Just the, the, the entire project was us winging it. It's got us this far. We're going to do this. It's how I live my life. It's how you live your life? Just wing it. Yeah, one, one, one P1 one engine at a, at a time. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're having thunderstorms, the light just went out, uh, that's okay. I don't know if you guys can hear me over this rain, but uh, we just got the spline. Uh, there's a spline shaft that goes in here, and uh, what you have to do is just put a bolt through, and then just pry on it, and then it just came right out. So, in theory, this should slide down, and then we can get this transmission out. And then we can uh, maybe inspect what's, uh, what's in here. I'm now I'm excited. I'm real excited. I hope nothing broke. I hope we broke nothing because <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't want to know what this thing costs to replace. Yep. Oh boy. Dude. That's hail. That's hail. Oh my god. Uh. Yep, that's hail. <laughs> now I have no idea how much this e-motor weighs, but it does not look light. Oh, so turns out this is real heavy. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, wow, yeah. Oh, boy. It's a lot heavier. All right. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> we got an e-motor out of a P1. I did one of this was on a Miata. <laughs> <laughs> we have successfully disconnected the transmission and hyperdrive assembly from P1. Yeah. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No, no more. more. <laughs> yeah. back. Yes. There we go. Ha ha. It's free. Yes. Yeah. Uh, watch everybody. Watch your hands. God. That's... Okay. Sweet. Now we just move back. Just move. Move it all back. Woo! <laughs> Look at that! There's a lot of sand in there. That's, yeah, that's, there's a lot of sand. We, we found more sand. We found all the sand. God. There's a clutch in there. That is so cool. You guys should probably watch this. Look at this. Look at what we have accomplished. This is a transmission and hybrid drive assembly. And, uh, this is interesting because most McLarens don't have this guy. That is a clutch, like, honestly, like a real clutch. And that uh, tells the car or the car tells it how much power it needs from the hybrid uh, drive assembly. So I don't think this is very good. I think there's probably some seawater in here or there was at one point. Uh, this all needs to be cleaned up and I need to rebuild this. I don't know who would do that, but uh, that's oh, a hey, problem for tomorrow. Look, look at that. That's who will do it. Oh, this is it's made by Alcon. Sweet! 
That's so, a popular brand, right? Actually, Alcon. Yeah, I have uh, have really nice brakes from Alcon. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they make uh, they make some good stuff. They make like upgraded uh, R35 brakes, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, so Alcon makes that. Sweet. Um, the company that makes the hybrid drive assembly, it's called X-Track, and they actually make the transmissions for like Pagani's and Koenigseggs and that's stuff cool. like that. That's yeah, that's freaking cool. Yeah, so Dude, this is crazy. It really this is crazy. A, we took a P1 apart. A P1. <laughs> P1. P1. Yeah, P1. with a little help with the Asian persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a little uh, concerned, and then Rex just sent it with uh, with the pry bar there, and then we got, we got this off. Hey man, it worked. <laughs> this this took quite a while. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from the turbos, from, honestly, from taking the engine out so to a lot of figuring it out. Yeah, and we didn't have any instructions no. at all. Uh, we did get some help from Jesse from uh, uh, McLaren Clark, Orlando. Yeah. Uh, he did help us out with uh, the e motor. But um, yeah, this is, I mean, we got everything stripped apart. And what I'm going to do with this uh, in the coming, I don't know, week or so, I'm going to strip it even more down and then I'm going to send it to Cannonball Garage so they can put their magic into it. And when I mean magic, I mean like a ton of horsepower. But. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to take that guy apart, and then uh, we'll see what else uh, we can do with all this. But for now, this is all gonna go into storage, and we're packing this up, because I have something even more exciting for you guys to see. Now here's a quick thing. This was an actual clutch assembly and we took that apart. Now if you look at this, uh, you can see that this had a water line and the water line was right there. And uh, I guess the water didn't get past this point, um, but this is a sprung clutch, meaning that uh, there are springs here to take up some of that tension and uh, basically make it uh, a little bit easier to drive. But this works completely differently than any other clutch. You see the mating surface is on the outside and it's super, super thin. Usually when you have a clutch, the mating surfaces are quite big. I have no idea who rebuilds this. I'm gonna try to get this rebuilt by whoever can do it. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put some feelers out. Alcon makes this, so I wager that we could probably not only rebuild this, but upgrade it so it holds even more power. Um, and we also have to clean this off because look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna show you something really, really cool. Everyone, this is the next day. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am excited because I am, well, I'm in the Philly area. I just flew into Philly and uh, there's something I want you to see. And it is behind this door right here. So this is a company called Exotic Car Gear and they make, as you can tell, exotic car gear. And there is some very interesting gear in there. Welcome everyone to a very interesting place. Now there's a bunch of boxes and stuff that's wrapped up, but these are what make dreams come true, especially in the case of my P1. Now, this is the owner of Exotic Car Gear. His name is David. What's going hey, on? How are you doing today? Eh, pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, I'm enjoying your shop here. Uh, would you mind giving us a little bit of a tour? Uh, well, here we have uh, a pretty large inventory of uh, priority-wise Lamborghini, McLaren, mm -hmm. and uh, Ferrari. Carbon fiber parts, the majority of it, about 90% of our production or better is a dry carbon autoclave, just like the manufacturers do, mm -hmm. uh, and the matching fabric of product for that. Um, individual manufacturer and then we certainly can take those patterns and use a different fabric for custom elements. Uh, so they make custom cars. carbon fiber parts. I'm excited to see what you guys got over there. Oh dude, this is big. This is the start of my P1 becoming an actual car and becoming a car that no one has ever seen before. So we work together, David and I, to develop a kit for this car. And this, as far as I know, is the second in the world to be, uh, you know, fit up like this. I mean, for this particular set of molds, yes, this yes. would be the second set of pieces out. Yes. And the first one was like a test fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Correct. Okay. Yeah. So for a running driving car, 
uh, my car will be the first in the world with this kit. But you know what? Let's 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 just do it. Let's, <laughs> let's, just, do it. let's just do it. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, dude. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first P1 Evo body. This is not a body kit. This is an entire body made of carbon fiber. And the P1 is made of carbon fiber anyway, but this one, I don't know if you can tell, it's all symmetrical herringbone weave. Every single part is just right down the middle and it's, it's perfect. It looks so, so cool. So we got the molds from a P1 GTR and we modified them. So this, for all intents and purposes, is a GTR front end, but it doesn't have the little canards. This is a more streamlined look, but in the back, this rear clamshell, also 100% carbon, you see this guy right here, that is a cap. You take that cap off and that is where the stock wing is gonna live. This is gonna be a McLaren P1 GTR with a stock wing with active aero. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. And the quality of the carbon fiber is really, really good. Now, this is a <laughs> the second run of uh, these things. So we're gonna have to modify things. We're gonna have to clean things up. We're gonna have to sand it and block it and do everything. But right out of the box, this is insane. And I've been working on this with, uh, with David. I mean, he's been working on it, you know? <laughs> gonna, yeah, I, yeah, he's been working really, really hard. What sort of methods uh, were used to make this? Uh, we took a digital scan of the original car mm -hmm. uh, to create, you know, negative elements and molds to create a set of molds uh, to produce the products and the individual products and sorted out which one needed to be uh, a casing style. The overall size of the molds, it, it requires a pretty large size autoclave. I can imagine, yeah, to, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a whole car's worth. To create. And this is, not, this is not a wing, this is just a cap. Yes, that's so if you utilize the actual um, high-rise wing, yeah. which we do also produce, that this piece, compared to without a fabric slate and everything, will just fill in that space. You yeah. don't have like the look of two wings. In theory, you could do two wings with this car now. Correct, yes, Yeah. yeah absolutely. I'm not sure how that would work, but you know. Yeah, my, I would look, think that would look a little odd, especially I, with the yeah. active arrow. Many things are different on this, but uh, this is actually wider than uh, the stock P1, right? Yeah, by 60 millimeters. 60, <laughs> a one six or six zero? Six zero. Six zero. It's like, it's like two inches. We might need some spacers and or we might need some custom wheels. But if you take a look at the side skirts, these are different because they have air going Right here, there's like an extra scoop. So there's a scoop here and there's a scoop there. And then over here, there's some more arrow bits uh, that go on the side skirt that are, that's different from the road car. But I wanted to make a road car race car hybrid. And I think this is gonna be the best version of that. So David, if somebody wanted to do this to their car, like if they had a P1 and they wanted to make it look like this, like the best P1 in the world, uh, what is the ordering process? Uh, you would contact uh, any member of our staff. We can create a kit for you and uh, have it produced. We can look at options of it not being fully exposed carbon mm -hmm. on that, which is partially, you know, primered, ready for paint. Okay. Um, not sure of the finish that you know, you're gonna have here on this, so we left it fully exposed. I think it shows the beauty of the carbon. Yes. On it, the kit does come complete. We can also add the option of the uh, the GTR the wing. style, the big wing. The big shopping as cart wing, yeah. As far as that goes, and the canards for the front, we do have molds for them. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular one we went without mm -hmm. on it, but it typically it would transfer over to the carcass of a, of a stock P1. So if somebody wanted to do an actual like GTR kit, this would fit exactly up. Um, you also have the, the diffuser. I almost forgot this, uh, but this is a GTR diffuser. And you can see right there that herringbone weave right in the middle. Um, this I believe may be very, very similar to the stock uh, P1. So I might reuse mine or I might use this one um, depending on 
I don't know which one is, is easier to fit up. And uh, <laughs> mine has a few boo-boos. Yeah, it probably has a couple scuffs, maybe a toilet seat mark. So right back here, that's where the glass goes. But I was thinking we could do something kind of custom. So instead of glass, we could do like louvers. Um, because this essentially right here is like a louvered piece. Like this, uh, what do they call it? The armadillo? McLaren calls it the armadillo. We could look to continue that pattern. Mm -hmm. the up through like up there? the base of the roof. Mm -hmm. That's something that then at the top might mimic the outline of the uh, roof scoop. That would be fantastic. The wear areas are interesting on this because uh, on the P1, the regular P1, the bumper sort of comes down like this. <laughs> and uh, on the GTR, you can see that you're gonna be able to see like the wheel, like a, quite a considerable amount of the wheel too. Okay, let's, uh, let's put it in a truck and then Bring it to my shop. What's your availability? Sure, we'll probably have it down to you within a couple weeks or so. We just gotta get it all packed back up and safe and sound and we'll load it in the trailer and we'll uh, take a run down south. Wonderful, so if anybody needs any sort of carbon fiber work. I mean, you guys do uh, Aston Martins, Porsches, look at that 996 with a wide body kit. You do Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, and custom work, lots of custom work. Uh, you have another shop too, like around here, right? You have yeah, like- Yeah, we have a, a couple other buildings in this complex. It's just, we have uh, vehicles and some production work being done, custom applications. Um, pretty much half of what we do is on our website. Everything else is just individual custom stuff. Mm -hmm. We partner with a lot of other clients for SEMA cars mm -hmm. and, and other custom show cars uh, throughout. So that's always the fun part is the small accents and uh, to be part of a kind of a bigger build. You guys need to go to Exotic Car Gear and that's exoticcargear.com? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is the guy to talk to. This is the guy that knows everything about all this custom carbon fiber work. So definitely go check him out. Everything will be in the link in the video description below. Uh, let's go check out some cars and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drool on this for like another five hours. His anti-run car has been prepared within an inch of its life as he's bucking and ruining and it's dancing all over the road and he's quickest by two and a half seconds at Malcolm. Now the race is on. Oh.